Yeah. 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 Y
The margin was averaging about 71 cents. Our gallon sold, the volume went up to about 9,600 gallons. So from an average of a little under three to over nine. And this graph shows that jet fuel sales over those three months. And as you see on the far left, we did even better in July, selling over 12,000 gallons. So as you recall, we generally characterize this strategy as reducing our margin by 25% and requiring a full, a four times increase in our margin, in our sales. And you can see by that graph, uh, we've gone beyond that. We're at about 4.5 times. So we have actually, uh, for the first three months of the program, in a cumulative increase, decrease in profit, we're actually just slightly above zero. We're at $443 uh, in the black. So we're very excited uh, that this uh, strategy is working to date. Uh, we'll see how we do in August. Uh, July is usually one of our best months out of the year. So hopefully we'll set, uh, we've set a high bar and we'll maintain that throughout the year. Uh, we see no reason why uh, the sales will not continue uh, to increase. And with that, uh, I conclude my report and be happy to answer any questions. And airport manager Tom Cleveland is here, uh, can provide additional detail if you're interested. Thank you. Okay, it appears that you're pleased with that. Any discussion? Tony. So I you had, you had kind of um, answered a part of my question. I was going to ask, is it seasonal, the, uh, the fuel uh, sales? Is it seasonal? And, and Tom would probably know best this question is, what are you expecting as we get into the winter months? Do we, are you expecting that this would continue as a good program? Right. I think the, uh, it will continue. Actually, the corporate flying goes up in the fall okay. and goes down a little bit in the summer. So I think it's going to continue. I mean, the beauty of this is, yeah, we were over 12,000 gallons, and we had a $78,000 month this month, and it's all out-of-town money. So that's the beauty of this program. We also had almost sold 11,000 gallons of 100 octane, which we never do. Um, you know, I've had to market this whole thing by myself, but it appears to be working. You know, Jim Mason came up with the idea and we ran with it. So uh, it, it's, it's been going very well. And as to date, we've sold um, about 5,900 gallons of jet fuel as of today, this month. Alderman Finucane, Bill. All right, uh, for either one of you, you know, obviously, uh, we were never selling the fuel below cost, so we are never going to lose money. We are just not going to hit the revenue projections we had said before. But then uh, my next question is, uh, how do you determine what the margin is going to be? I see here that over the three months, we've had three different margin levels. How do you determine what that margin is going to be? Every Tuesday, we, we get a new price from our supplier uh, on what we pay for that fuel. Mm -hmm. So I will not go below 50 cents. There's been other airports trying to match us, not many, but a couple. So we just have stayed below them a little bit too. Okay, so then in the uh, left column here, the purchase price per gallon was an average amount, not a uh, total for the month. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I, I would note, uh, Alderman, that um, that jet fuel pricing, that resale that we buy it for, is very volatile. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, the price. Uh, on the day after uh, President Trump made his statements regarding North Korea, the price went up 19 cents. So we do see that volatility um, in, the, in the price that we're buying it for. So we're, we're trying to match that as we go. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion on this <coughs> item? Uh, Alderman Norico. <coughs> Are there any particular groups or categories of uh, pilots, planes, companies that have used this or has there been widespread interest or? Uh, what we're seeing were the cross country uh, jets that we're pulling in are owner operator jets. <coughs> um, 
a lot of we're pulling a few jets out of airports in the region mm -hmm. but a lot of the the guys going cross country are noticing what we're doing and they they love it they can come in they can get fueled and they can go mm -hmm. i mean it's very quick so mm -hmm. that's yeah i would in. imagine that that would be one of the advantages that there isn't a traffic jam right here. right Yes, Tony. I, I'll just end with, uh, you know, give you kudos and thank you very much for sticking with the, uh, you know, taking the idea, taking the torch and running with it, uh, both yourself and Director Holdman. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any further discussion? Deputy City Clerk uh, Ruth Scott, I don't believe anybody has uh, indicated or has signed a request to speak to this item. That's correct. Okay. Anybody from the audience that appear that would like to speak to this particular item, the low margin jet fuel pricing strategy? <coughs> if not, thank you very much, uh, Tim. <coughs> You're going to stay right up there now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Our next item on the agenda, city engineer position update. Tim? Thank you, Mayor, members of council. I'd like to provide an update for our city engineer position. As you recall, our city engineer left employment of the city in March of 2017, and that was following the elimination of our project implementation engineer position at the end of 2016. Uh, those two full-time equivalents, uh, in addition to the interns that we typically use represent uh, a typical year for us in engineering of about 2.5 full-time equivalents uh, providing engineering services um, to public works and uh, throughout other city departments. In May 2017, uh, we came before city council and asked for approval of an agreement uh, to engage WBK, Greg Chismark, and his group uh, out of St. Charles. They have done an outstanding job. Thank you very much uh, for giving us uh, the authority to enter into that agreement. Uh, Greg's group has done an outstanding job. Uh, they're excellent engineers. Uh, they're very responsive. I wanted to give you just a little bit of a thumbnail of what they've been doing for us over the last four to five months. There's two areas which they are primarily contributing. One is in the public sector infrastructure capital improvements engineering. That's the public engineering we call it. The other is in site plan reviews of private development. We'll call that private engineering. In the public engineering sector, uh, Greg and his group have gotten their hands around the Kishwaukee Kiwanis multi-use uh, path project. And as you remember from two weeks ago, uh, there are some issues there, and so mm -hmm. it's taken a lot of time to unravel some of that. It's quite a, a long project in terms of history and extremely complex in the moving parts. That project is going to start construction in the next week or so. Uh, Greg and his uh, group has done an excellent job getting all of the <coughs> permits, uh, that are required and getting us moving forward on that. The street maintenance program, uh, Greg has been an integral part in getting that program up and running. The Illinois 23 resurfacing project was reviewed uh, by Greg and his group. The Annie Glidden Fairview intersection uh, design and construction, hopefully in 2019, uh, is being managed by Greg. We've been uh, having conversations with the tollway about resurfacing the Peace Road overpass, which is a tollway bridge, and we're responsible for the maintenance of the pavement. And so we're going to be looking at resurfacing that. They've helped us with looking at improvements to our Fifth Street um, and uh, Lincoln Highway intersection, looking uh, at improvements there. They've helped us in the DSATS uh, area of the uh, bus shelters project gotten his hands around MFT and all of the funding that was uh, being provided by MFT. 
done a great job on traffic. Uh, some of these traffic issues that we have accumulated over a number of months, uh, Greg has been able to knock out. And we've got a whole list more that we're, we're starting on. You'll see some of that tonight. And also the parking issues. Uh, he's helped us get our CDBG uh, program back up and running. He's worked with our stormwater folks and our water, uh, our utilities division as well. So you can see that's a lot. Uh, and, and I've been digging into it too. And so uh, Greg and I have been uh, spending a lot of time uh, working through uh, the issues. That's just on the public side. On the private side, uh, where Greg has been helping us is to manage the three consultants who are doing the actual work of the site plan reviews. But part of that is knowing the background of the project, selecting the appropriate consultant, and then engaging that consultant in establishing a scope schedule and budget for that project. These projects are sometimes very short in duration. So they can get out of, out of hand pretty quick, so we've really got to be uh, up, up to speed on them right away. Uh, 14 projects, including Cornerstone and Northwest uh, Medicine. Uh, so Greg has been doing a lot. I, and I just want to emphasize uh, the excellent work, and it's just been a pleasure to, to work with Greg. We went into this with the uh, commitment to stay within budget amounts. Uh, we had a fixed amount. We had spent some of that in January, February, and half of March on the city engineer's salary. And since then, uh, that, that amount against our, our budgeted amount. And then from there on, uh, we've been applying uh, the consulting services against that amount. I have had to manage uh, the level of effort of that engineering uh, so that it doesn't exceed an average of about five and a half hours per day. That's the full-time equivalent of about 6, 0.65 to 0.7 full-time equivalents. So you can imagine uh, what uh, is going on. We're going from a 2.5 full-time equivalent staffing to a 0 0.65, 0 0.7. Now Greg is good. But not, not that good. Uh, that, that's not even humanly possible to provide uh, that level. We've had to um, cut some of things, uh, and I'm very concerned about that. I'm concerned about capital improvement project uh, generation. Where are the next projects coming from? Where are the next ideas? that we're developing in concert with the community that these are things that need to be done. Uh, we really don't have an effort going towards that. I'm concerned about uh, some of the projects that are not getting enough attention. They're very complex. Uh, Greg and I are, uh, I mean, we're seasoned project managers. Uh, we know the telltale signs of a project going bad. Uh, and so we're able to uh, put out the fires where we need to, but that's a dangerous long-term strategy. We can't do that long-term. <clears throat> I believe that we're probably missing some grant opportunities. We don't have any uh, effort going towards that. And some of our engineering reviews for permits, uh, we're asking uh, others, HR Green and other staff to do that and it's placing a burden on them. And so, uh, you know, in total, um, what I have concluded is that we cannot sustain the current level of effort in our engineering department given the constraints that we have been given uh, with regard to budgeting. And therefore, uh, I will be moving uh, post haste to recruit and hire a full-time permanent and uh, licensed professional engineer. Um, we believe that uh, the candidate will be uh, someone with more than 10 years experience, uh, probably ho hopefully even more than that, and the majority of that experience in municipal engineering. Um, 
having been relatively new to this position, I think that this immersion into uh, city engineering uh, has provided me the background to know what we, what we want and what we're looking for and what we have to have in this organization. And I'll be using uh, Greg uh, to give me opinions and to help us through this process. Uh, as much as I uh, hate to uh, end the relationship with WBK, uh, I think that we're best suited, given our budget constraints, to go to a full-time permanent uh, professional engineer as the city engineer. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Any discussion from any of our council members? Alderman Verbeek. If it's the will of the council, uh, may we add uh, a residential component to this position, uh, if, if we all think that that's appropriate in this case? Well, Mike, as you certainly know, uh, I was, I've been very strong on residency, and when uh, our city manager told me about the fact that we were going to uh, advertise for the full-time uh, city engineer <coughs> position, that was one of the first things I said to Anne-Marie, and, and apparently we are mandated within certain constraints for that particular position. And Anne-Marie Gore, you may want to address yourself to what you told me as it relates to somewhat of a uh, box, if you will, of residency parameters. Uh, and I'll let Anne-Marie speak to that. Sure, and as I <coughs> indicated earlier today, when we last filled the position four years ago, um, this is what it would have been called at the time a Chapter 3 employee, and we have different categories for different employees as far as what's required or not required. Uh, so at that time, it was in that rectangular area, which is also the same area that's required, I believe, of uh, our firefighters as well as uh, Public Works employees. So. Um, We'll have to verify that's still required. So if the council wants to go with that, uh, we would definitely recruit. I will express just the concern as I have one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one with the mayor of that there's certain positions that it's very competitive and um, uh, it will decrease your pool of applicants and it may make it more difficult to recruit uh, for the position. But we'll follow whatever direction you provide. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Yes, Tim. The one thing, Mayor, from, from my perspective and having experienced uh, this change, uh, I'm not likely, uh, in, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, hire someone who's not fully qualified to provide the services that the city needs in these engineering, uh, engineering services. So. Uh, we know what we want, and uh, I think it would be a mistake to second uh, to settle for something less than the standard that we've established with WBK. If there is a comfort level that we have with the consul that uh, allows the hiring of this individual or the search for this uh, full-time city engineer position within that geographical parameters, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, uh, even though I'm very strong, I'm strong. I strongly believe, and I will continue to believe, that residency in the city of DeKalb is very, very important, and uh, 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 we we will see how that goes. Is there any further discussion on that, or any any other thoughts? Yeah, Bill. Just that my preference would be to live within the city limits. Okay. <clears throat> I, yeah. I would agree as well with the uh, with the requirements that are the same for the firefighters as well if it's within whatever their rectangular box is if it's within five minutes of city hall or whatever the requirements are because I don't know that they're all within city limits there is a, I think no. there's a distance requirement no there's there's basically two different requirements I believe the uh, agreement or collective bargaining agreement with police officers calls for a radius uh, within a certain uh, distance of the city of DeKalb and then I believe our uh, collective bargaining agreement with both the firefighters and AFSME <coughs> calls for this rectangular area that goes beyond the, the boundaries of the community. And there were certain positions that, as I said to the mayor, were included in that, uh, which included not only the city engineer, the street superintendent, the uh, water superintendent, um, that there were certain positions that were required to live within that rectangular area. Yeah, so I would go with you. So, so you're comfortable with that. Uh, uh, Tony, how about you, Mike? Are you? I like city limits. 
You like city limits. My, uh, uh, Bill, you like city, city limits. limits. Mike, do you have any th opinion on it? Again, re uh, you remind <laughs> folks at home and those that we're not going to make a decision tonight, but I would like some sense because we want to make sure that we're comfortable as your city council uh, with moving forward on what is a key important position. You know, when I was com campaigning, it was like people were in panic. We're without a city engineer. And I, I concur with you. I've worked with Greg Chisimark and seen him in action, if you will, here at City Hall. Uh, he has really done a superb job. Uh, so the importance of that position to this city cannot be underestimated. Kate? Um, I would be comfortable with the uh, broader geographic area. Um, I recognize the value of the identification with the city, but especially for a position like this one, which has such specific professional requirements, I also want to make sure that we get the best person available for the position because there appears to be so much activity, you know, both happening now but on the horizon, that we need someone who in, can really step in and be as functional as possible. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Yes, Alderman Marquardt. I debate going back and forth on this idea of city employees having to be um, a resident of the city. Uh, and I think that's why police officers and firefighters and other unions have over the years fought back to have a radius as opposed to um, within the city limits. And they've fought for that right through their uh, negotiations because there is a time frame and you can make a case for that part, you know, of an emergency and coming. So you can kind of make a case for that. I could live in the city of DeKalb and work a farm 10 miles out and probably do a pretty good job of it. I could live 10 miles out, be outside of the radius, run a business in town, and probably do a pretty good job of it. You know, mm -hmm. I could have a car dealership right downtown here, live 10 miles out of town, but do most of my business in town. So there's two sides to this. And someone says, well, you're taking money from the residents of DeKalb that are paying your salary. All right. If I live outside the city, but I run a business in the town, I'm taking money from the citizens of the town, right? Does that mean I have to live in town? No. So that's my viewpoint on it. If I'm overwhelmed by everybody else who wants to say that only the people that live in DeKalb can work for the city of DeKalb, you know, I, I can be voted down on that. But I don't think we want to shoot ourselves in the foot just because somebody happens to live five miles outside the city and they're the best engineer that we want to have, but they happen to want to live there. You see my point? Absolutely. So there's my viewpoint. On Thank that. you. Well, I'm just delighted that all of us have weighed in on this. And again, we will not make the decision tonight. I don't think anybody has registered to speak to this item. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Deputy Clerk uh, Scott uh, is uh, having uh, moving on. Finally, is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to any items not on the agenda? Again, we're not making any new decisions tonight. If not, uh, I would uh, ask for a motion to recess for an executive session of the City Council. So moved. Yes, that's what I just called for. Right? Don't right. you have to read why we're doing that? Oh, yes. Recess for executive session of the City Council, if we vote approval of that. 
uh, approval to hold an executive session to discuss the purchase or lease of real property as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 2 C5 and number two approval to hold an executive session to discuss pending or imminent litigation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C 11 uh, we've had the motion that we uh, recess to hold an executive session second, second. it's been seconded uh, roll call please Vanukin yes Marquardt yes Norico yes Verbeck yes favor yes Smith yes six yes the meeting of the city of the whole now will go into recess we shall recon reconvene as your full city council at six o'clock